One of the truly rewarding parts of being a parent is watching your young child grow up, take his first few steps, totter along and reach where he or she intended to go. Along with that comes the fear that our child may fall any time because naturally the child is unsteady, unstable and is learning a new skill. Like any other new skill, it takes time to get used to it. There'll be many a spill or fall along the way. And as a parent, the first thing you need to accept is that this will happen. Most of the time, there won't be any problem. The child will just get up and continue merrily along his or her way. But sometimes children do fall and suffer a cut. When there is a cut, there will inevitably be some bleeding and the sight of blood sends almost all parents into a tizzy and a panic. Now, once you accept that the child will fall, you must understand why. Firstly, as far as the child is concerned, he or she needs to go from point A to point B and does not cons consider how or at what speed one should go there. These judgments come after a long time. Right now, she can see only point B and rushes towards it. She does not consider obstacles along the way, which could be a toy lying on the ground carelessly or an edge of the table or a chair, which is directly between her and point B. Also, the child most of the time hasn't experienced any significant pain or bleeding before. So there is no fear that something bad can happen. This fear starts developing with experiences and leads us to be naturally cautious about these things. Her muscles and bones are growing. They were not accustomed to bearing the weight in an upright position. Now suddenly these demands are made on the muscles and bones. This is what leads the child to be unsteady and unstable. The new load imposed on the muscles makes them fatigued and tired out easily and they are less able to maintain their balance. Now the sense of balance is extremely fine and it is one of the miracles of nature and our evolution. There are thousands, literally millions, I would say, of receptors in our body who are constantly giving out signals to the brain as to which part of the body is in motion, which is stable, which is in which position. And the brain effortlessly makes all these calculations, uses the correct muscle to propel us forward, stabilize us, or even take steps backward, all the while ma maintaining our balance. Again, in the case of the child, this balance is developing. He will get there, but it will be a little rocky road ahead. And your job is to ensure that your home environment is as safe as possible for the child. The goal should not be that he, he should not fall, but the goal should be that even if he falls, he should not injure himself significantly. Now, once you understand why this has, the child is prone to falling, you need to first ensure that you take all precautions in case the inevitable happens and there is a significant injury after a fall. So one of the first things that you can do is before the event occurs, keep, keep an excellent first aid box and a first aid box should consi consist of some cleaning agents, gauze pieces and sterile cotton and something to bandage the wound, an assortment of ointments, which could be neutral ointments. In fact, neutral ointments are far better than putting inappropriate ointment. I have seen many a parent rush here and there. Some put mud into the wound, some put turmeric into the wound, some put something else into the wound. So just have a simple antiseptic ointment. There are many available in the market. Povidone iodine is a common one. The common brands are Betadine, Vocadine. So have one of them with you and some tape in that first aid box, which will secure it in place. I do hope that you have a printed list of all telephone numbers, which you need to contact in an emergency stuck somewhere where you know where it is. The best place would be probably on your fridge or on a wall, but that may not look aesthetically very good. But you can certainly keep it with a, one of those travel magnets that you have collected on your sojourns. So it should contain, apart from police stations, the fire station, the hospitals, your pediatrician, 
any other emergency, your relatives' numbers. So it is very difficult when you are in a state of panic to hunt for numbers here and there. So please keep all this ready. Now, when you are going to the hospital, you should have a packed kit ready with you about the things that you will need, both for your child as well as for yourself. When you take the child to the hospital, you don't know how long you're going to be in the hospital, whether the child needs admission. So have a couple of changes of clothes, some water bottle, some emergency cash in that kit, emergency kit, a, a couple of change of clothes for you. This is especially important if you are currently a single parent, you should have a ready record of your vaccination status of the child to carry with you to the hospital emergency room so that the doctor is bound to ask you what vaccinations the child has received. And if you are not good, likely to remember, you may receive, you may say everything, find that you have missed out on something important. Again, I emphasize, please do not panic. Now, it is very easy for me to say, but the sight of an injured child, especially one's own, does tend to bring panic out even in the most tough parents. But if you are prepared, and I hope you are, so especially after watching this video, this is going to happen to everybody. So being prepared is the first and the most important thing.